He does not like the neighbor's truck. He thinks it's growling at him. You think it's growling at you? Hello, goat lovers. This is Crystal with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. What started with four chickens and two goats quickly grew into a lifestyle. So we moved, got more land, and of course, more goats. Follow our adventures as we grow our herd, our food, and our family. So when we first moved here to this 10 and a half acre property, we pretty quickly knew we were going to need a lot of muscle. Uh, we live right on a wash and there's a lot of predators, um, coyotes, a lot of coyotes. So when we first moved, um, we actually, we had the goats in our backyard. <laughs> so uh, we were just scared. We didn't know what to expect and we wanted to make sure they were real close so that in case of any predators. So we knew we were going to have to get a, a livestock guardian dog eventually. So we were here for about a year before um, we got this guy, but uh, we were talking about it a lot. We were really just really wanting to get one. We, we went back and forth, should we get a puppy um, and train it, but then it's like we, we wanted the muscle now, so we were maybe thinking probably an adult would be better. And um, Derek actually happened to go camping one day and a friend of mine called and said, hey, I know this woman who's trying to get rid of her Great Pyrenees. Do you want to take a look? So of course I called Derek and he's like, great. Uh, <laughs> she found a dog. So I decided I would at least go and, and meet him. So of course when I when I pulled up to the property, this woman had signs out, beware of the dog, all this stuff, um, which was like, ah. So I just pulled up to the gate with the doggies, going to meet him, and these are the signs. I thought, well, that's, that's either a good or a bad thing. We need a dog that, that needs, you know, you need to be beware of. So um, go in and pull up, and he was, a giant, just a giant, a gorgeous, fluffy, white giant. And I had never really been around a dog that large. So he was, he was a little intimidating. I didn't know quite how to take him, um, but he just gentle, just gentle as can be. Um, very, very calm. He loved to be pet. He wanted to meet me right away. Um, showed no aggression. He didn't bark at me. Anything like that. But, uh, yeah. And I left there knowing I wanted this dog. I knew I wanted this boy. So. So I came home, told Derek I was in love with him, and I definitely wanted him. Uh, <laughs> took some pictures, and, you know, of course, Pictures never do justice uh, as to how, how big he actually looks in person, but um, so it was a go. I thought, we'll just go get him on the weekend, that way I can make sure I'm here the whole weekend with him and get him used to the place. So that's, that's what I did. I went to go get the dog, and he is like a 150, 160 pound dog, so getting him in the back of the truck was not easy. So. <laughs> Actually, I had a friend come over because his his original owner it w was an older lady and she just couldn't help lift him up. And I was still a little intimidated too. Like I didn't want to tick the dog off and have him bite me or something. But to get him in the truck was not the easiest task. So we got him home and took him just straight into the house. It was dark and just wanted to make sure he didn't run off or anything. I did I did walk him around the house and whatnot, but but we just took him into the house. So of course the family was like, oh my gosh, this dog is a giant. <laughs> and everybody, you know, just again, he's such a such a big dog. He's a, he's a little intimidating. So uh, the dogs were our dogs, Dingo, Dana, and, and Dixie were like, what in the world is that? 
and he could care less. He, he was not intimidated at all. So that was that was kind of a funny introduction. We had to keep this guy on a leash for. I mean, I just kept him on a leash the, the whole the whole weekend. So the weekend went really good. He was just very friendly, just wanted pet. He's just kind of glued to you. Obviously, I have the leash, but even even at that, you know, he's he was just really, really friendly. Not, you know, he didn't bark. He wasn't, uh, he, he wasn't home at that point, obviously. He did not, he was just wondering where he was. So the weekend went really well. Um, and then I went to work, and Derek and the kids were, were here. And so they thought, well, let's just try it out. We'll, we'll let him off of the leash and see see how he does. So it went well when they were outside watching him. They went in the house for just a couple minutes, thinking that they would be able to catch him if if he would try to run off. So they were they were testing him. And they came back outside, and this giant beast was gone. They couldn't find him anywhere. So they get in the truck, and they're going around, hollering, looking, all that stuff. And they, they just could not find him. So, of course, I get home from work, and I felt awful. I was so devastated, just thinking, like, gosh, this dog's out there somewhere. You know, there's a, there's a lot of wild out here, so didn't, didn't know where he was, and, and just felt awful about it. And I didn't, didn't think he would come back. I did not think we were going to find him. So, our first week with the Great Pyrenees... We lost him. So we put up flyers. We did, you know, all those things. I got on the neighborhood app and went to work the next day. And that evening, shortly before I got off work, somebody had called and said, hey, I think I have your dog. So I called Derek, sent him right over there. And sure enough, we got this sweet boy back. So needless to say, for the next couple of weeks, he was on a tight leash. He had to sleep in the house with us, you know, because I, I just didn't trust him. We have fencing all around our ten and a half acres, but he just can push it down and go right over. I mean, he's, he's a big dog. Um, so there is no holding him in if he doesn't want to be in. So that that's kind of the thing. So again, a tight leash. And it, and it really ended up being a lot of work. A lot of babysitting. Hi, hi. Why aren't we talking about you? Here, sit boy. And after a while, I, this went on for about three weeks and, and to the point where Derek wasn't even able to go to Thanksgiving with us down at my grandma's house. Like, literally, we were worried the dog was going to run away. We can't just leave him in the house. He's, you know, potential tear up the house or scratch the doors down, want out. Um, so it was, it was a lot of work just keeping him in the yard keeping a close eye on him so the woman we got him from said if it doesn't work out you know give us a call and and I'll, and I'll I'll take him back she wanted to make sure he went to a good home and she also wanted to make sure he was a good fit for us so we decided and it was really sad because I just instantly fell in love with the big guy but it was just too much work for what we had at the time everything else going on so I called her and told her, you know, hey, um, he's just not working out. So I called her, uh, took her a while to respond. And when she did respond, her, <laughs> she was going to potentially put him in a pound. She said she could. So after a while, after I had called her and messaged her, she, she calls back telling me that she has called a few shelters. Um, you know, a no-kill shelter and that she wants to put him in the pound and that she'll come and pick him up. So, obviously, he ain't going to no shelter and no pound. Um, I don't care if it is a no-kill pound. He's going to stay with us now. Obviously, I was not okay with that. So, there that one out the window. Um, you know, I, I was thinking the whole time she would she would take him back and you know, wanted a good home for him, but I wasn't willing to let this guy go to no pound. It would That would have killed me. So, he doesn't deserve to be in a pound. But, um, so anyway, we ended up keeping the guy. And it was 
right a long couple of months after that. Just <laughs> keeping him on a short leash. You know, he had to sleep in the house for a couple months. And, and in that couple month time frame, he he realized where home was. You know, this, this felt like home to him. So he just did a lot better. And as each day went by, he just got a little better. You know, you, you it was probably two weeks before we even heard the guy bark. You know, so once, now he barks all the time at everything. But, um, you know, he started peeing around, like obviously marking his territory, things like that. So, three, four, uh, probably about four weeks, we started letting him off the leash when we were outside. And he did really good with it. So, that's kind of, it just slowly progressed. Um, and then, yeah, in about a couple months, he was good to go. He knew that this was home and... We haven't had any issues with him sneaking out or running away since. He does not like the neighbor's truck. He thinks it's growling at him. You think it's growling at you? And, and it's it's hard to believe that we've had this boy for for a year now because it's, I can't even imagine not having him. He's a, we love him. He is like no other dog. They're the Great Pyrenees, you know, everything we read, because we researched these dogs for a good year and a half, um, but everything we read on them, like, they're just, they're so gentle, unless they don't, you know, obviously, unless they, they need not to be, um, and they're, they're just very smart, and you'd think out here in this desert, this uh, solid white giant would be very easy to spot out and find, but... He's very sneaky for as large as he is, too. So, he does his job here, and he does it very well. And he's he's definitely at home. He thinks he's king of the compost pile. His favorite spot is jumping up on our very tall compost and just perching up while we feed and, and being able to survey and make sure everything's, everything's going good. So... Having this boy here with us and on this on this property makes for sure makes me feel a lot safer with the goats. Um, and and again, we just love him. He's just so pretty and fluffy. You like it here? And he loves us. He really likes it here as well. So that is the year in review with this guy. It's it's been awesome. So he's about five years old now, and I think, actually I know, I definitely want a puppy Pyrenees to raise, um, you know, to raise up. So maybe that's something in the near future, maybe in the next year or so, that we'll definitely get a puppy Pyrenees and let them, uh, you know, let Dane show him or her the ropes. Because it is a very, very neat dog, and you just feel safer. I feel so much safer with my goats. Um, out here where there's so many predators you know having this big beast so we love him so thank you guys so much for watching I would like to say if you guys have a ranch and you got some land and you need a good dog a good livestock dog the Great Pyrenees they're definitely definitely amazing amazing animals um, highly recommend them what? What? <laughs> so again, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you again soon.